Hey y'all, tonight we're gonna to be looking at Jonah 3, one through 10 and continuing our series in Jonah. Before we get started, I wanna give a brief recap of where we're at in this story. So God has called Jonah to Nineveh, but, and Jonah was from a small town near Galilee, and Nineveh was a very big, wealthy city in Assyria. And Jonah resisted God because he really did not wanna to go to Nineveh. The people of Nineveh were very different from him, and he was kind of scared to go to them. He didn't particularly like them, and so he really resisted God. Um, he wanted to go to Tarshish instead, and so he almost died when he was thrown into the sea, and yet God rescued Jonah by having a big, huge fish swallow Jonah and spit him back onto land. And during that process, um, Jonah, he he became broken over his sin and he repented towards God and he decided, okay, I'm going to follow God and I'm going to go to Nineveh. So that's where we're at in the story. So Jonah has reconciled with God and he is ready to continue this call that God has put on his life to go to Nineveh. Have you ever been in a big fight with a good friend or a sibling, a parent, and then you finally reconcile, you finally make up, um, and there's this great sense of renewed love. There's a great sense of purpose to your relationship. That's where Jonah is at in this story. He's reconciled with God and he's ready to follow him. So I want you to take a few minutes in your group and read through Jonah 3, 1 through 10 as a group, and then we'll come back together. So there are three points that I want to make from this passage. First of all, Jonah shows us how to repent. When Jonah goes into the belly of the well and he realizes that he has disobeyed God, he has gone again against what God has called him to do, he begins to weep and he repents and he turns to God and he goes to the people of Nineveh. Like I said before, Nineveh is a city full of great wealth. And so likely the people of Nineveh are chasing after the things of this world. They're putting their hope and their trust in wealth and status rather than God. They were turning from God and God was calling them to repent. So now that Jonah has gone through what he has, now that Jonah has recognized his own sin and he has turned from obeying God, he is calling and he's repented, returned to God, He's calling the people of Nineveh to do the same thing. So Jonah has this renewed sense of compassion and empathy for the people of Nineveh. Sometimes our own sin and repentance teaches us to be gracious towards others. Have you ever gone through something in your life where you have actively disobeyed God? You've walked away from him and God has convicted you. He has drawn you back to himself. He has shown you abundant grace. And at that point, you then had empathy towards others. You long for others to experience that same sense of grace and repentance. That's where Jonah is at. So God is using Jonah's story in the life of the people in Nineveh. Um, repentance in the Old Testament means to grieve or lament and then to return. So that's exactly what the Ninevites are doing in this passage. They put on sackcloth and they wept and they stayed inside. They grieved their sin. Do we really grieve our sin? Do we recognize what our sin does to God? That it shows that we are turning against the God of the universe, the God who is perfectly holy and yet has shown us great grace and love. We should grieve when we break his heart. We should grieve when we disobey him. And that's what the Ninevites are doing. They're truly repenting. They're grieving and then they're turning from their sin. And secondly, Jonah shows us that God is always at work. When God calls us to do something, he's not asking us to do something that he's not already a part of. God knew what he was going to do in the life of Jonah before he even, and, and the people of Nineveh before he even sent Jonah to Nineveh. Jonah was scared, but that was because he was trusting in his own power and his own abilities rather than God's. John Piper said once, 
God is always doing 10,000 things in your life, and you may only be aware of three of them. We just have no idea how God is at work in our lives. And so if he calls you to do something that feels really scary or feels out of your comfort zone, know that if God is truly calling you to do it, then he will go with you, he will be with you, he will be for you. You are not alone. He is at work. And then finally, Jonah shows us that God is gracious. God rescued Jonah when he was running away from God. It was in the midst of his rebellion that God saved Jonah and used Jonah to influence the people of Nineveh. Have you ever been in a situation in your life where you just felt like there was no way God could turn it around or that you had run too far from God for him to come back to you? Jonah shows us that we can never outrun God, that he will continue to use you no matter how far you run. God could have destroyed Nineveh, but instead he delivered them. God loved them enough to reveal their wrongdoing and sin to them and draw them back to himself. It was gracious of God to reveal his sin, to reveal Jonah's sin to him, and it is gracious when God reveals our sin to us because he doesn't want us to stay captured in our sin. He wants to free us from our sin. So it is God's grace that he reveals our sin to us and frees us from it. So repentance is a gift from God. I know it's a word that sometimes we're afraid of or we don't fully understand, but repentance is God's grace to us. It is his way of drawing us back to himself. There's a story in Chronicles of Narnia, Voyage of the Dawn Treader, that I want to end with. It illustrates this perfectly, this idea of repentance, this idea of God freeing us from our sin. It's about a terrible little boy named Eustace Scrubs, and you might have, you might have heard this story before, but I want you to think about it in light of repentance and in light of what we're talking about tonight. Eustace had turned into a dragon because he had such a terrible attitude. And this is the story of him being freed um, and, and becoming a boy again. He says, I looked up and saw the very last thing I expected, a huge lion coming slowly toward me. And one queer thing was that there was no moon last night, but there was moonlight where the lion was. So it came nearer and nearer. I was terribly afraid of it. You may think that being a dragon, I could have knocked any lion out easily enough, but it wasn't that kind of fear. I wasn't afraid of it eating me. I was just afraid of it. If you can understand. Well, it came close up to me and looked straight into my eyes. And I shut my eyes tight. But that wasn't any good because it told me to follow it. You mean it spoke? I don't know. Now that you mention it, I don't think it did. But it told me all the same. And I knew I'd have to do what it told me. So I got up and I followed it, and it led me a long way into the mountains. There was a garden, trees, and fruit and everything. In the middle of it, there was a well. The water was as clear as anything, and I thought if I could get in there and bathe, it would ease the pain in my leg. But the lion told me I must undress first. So I started scratching myself, and my scales began coming off all over the place. But just as I was going to put my feet into the water, I looked down and saw that they were all hard and rough and wrinkled and scaly, just as they had been before. Then the lion said, but I don't know if it spoke, you will have to let me undress you. I was afraid of his claws, I can tell you, but I was pretty nearly desperate now. So I just lay flat down on my back to let him do it. The very first tear he made was so deep that I thought it had gone right into my heart. And when he began pulling the skin off, it hurt worse than anything I've ever felt before. The only thing that made me able to bear it was just the pleasure of feeling the stuff peel off. You know, if you've ever picked the scab off a sore place, it hurts like Billy O, but it is such fun to see it coming away. Well, he peeled the beastly stuff right off, just as I thought I'd done it myself the other three times, only they hadn't hurt. And there it was, lying on the grass, only ever so much thicker and darker and more knobbly looking than the others had been. And there I was, there was I as smooth and soft as a peeled switch and smaller than I had been. Then he caught hold of me. 
I didn't like that much for I was very tender underneath now that I had no skin on and he threw me into the water. It smarted like anything, but only for a moment. After that, it became perfectly delicious, and as soon as I started swimming and splashing, I found that all the pain had gone away from my arm. And then I saw why. I turned into a boy again. God wants to turn us into children again. He wanted Jonah to remember who he was as a son of God. He wanted the people of Nineveh to remember who they were. Who they were. He called them to repentance in order to make them whole and free again. And he is calling you to repentance to make you whole and free again. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the story of Jonah and Nineveh and that we see this beautiful ex example of your grace and your mercy, God. And I just pray for any students tonight who um, might be hiding from you, who might be running from you. God, I pray that they would experience the grace and, and the, of repentance that the Ninevites did. I pray that they would grieve over their sin, but only to find freedom and joy in you. God, I pray that you would work in the discussion um, amongst groups tonight and that you would just bless these groups, bless these leaders, and bless these students. God, we love you. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. And we ask all this in your son's name. Amen.